<coughs> hey guys. Hey guys. This is a video because of Matthew Walsh. He is having troubles with his depression right now. I understand that. Some of you might understand it because some of you might be going through similar things like, oh, something bad's happening in school. This is like during a break in my school. Like, this is something that actually used to make me want to hurt myself. I used to always be called retarded, faggot, mainly way before I thought or knew that I was bi. Before I knew I was bi, I was just like, stop calling me that, I don't even know what it means. It's just annoying. Cause I'm not doing anything wrong, I'm just, like, walking down the street. It was even before I dyed my hair. I just, like, dressed up like this. Blue jeans. <clears throat> and then people just went, FIRE! And stuff like that, just to get a rise out of me. To me, I was just like, I want to punch that person. I never could, though. I was never that person who could actually hurt someone. <clears throat> but it made me feel like I I've had clinical depression. I still kind of deal with it today. Because clinical depression is depression that you like. There's certain levels of depression, like. Normal depression is just like maybe a month or two, six months, a year, and clinical is a long period of time. I've had it since I was little. I didn't really feel too bad when I was really little. I was that kid who was just trying to say stupid things like, I used to kind of like have a catchphrase, coconut. People laughed at it because it was stupid. I used to yell coconut just to say it. My sister, before I even started doing that, she used to say one thing about me. Every time mom and dad got into a fight, she would say, this never happened before you were here. I understand where she's coming from from that. And I never felt like my dad cared about me. So it was also because of that. And then being made fun of in school for being dyslexic, needing to go into like a special class. And all I understood was, to everyone else, I'm worth nothing. And actually, when I was in middle school, my teachers literally wanted to get rid of me. They, they, loved, they loved my personality. I was a really nice kid. If someone needed help, I would instantly help them. If someone was... I would never really badmouth the teacher. I would just go... Sometimes we had disagreements like, I can't shut down the computer. The computer's still loading, trying to save this file. Wait, it just shut it down. I can't. Like, they said I badmouthed them like that. I mouthed off to them like that. But then they're just like, but he's a nice kid. So they also tried to get rid of me through sending me to a really, really bad, um, Votech. Where they were just teaching me, like, how to clean clothes, how to make, like, a calendar, things like that. <clears throat> I'm going to me out of it. But, it kind of made me feel worse, because I felt like if a teacher doesn't even want me in their class anymore, should I just be dead? I used to like 
I tried to record this video twice. First time I shut down. I used to walk into the kitchen and this was not wearing one of these, but walking around with a pajama shirt and going, I want to die. I looked at the knife, thought, should I cut here? Stab? Cut? Which? Which would kill me the quickest. But now I know it would have been one of these two. But doing, seeing all the people who had depression on YouTube and used to and things like that, it made me actually think, why not try to survive? Why not try to become cool on YouTube? Maybe people might like me there. My first couple attempts on videos, I was just like, Hey guys! Like I used to carry around a camera sometimes. Hey guys, what's up? Um, I'm just relaxing, da 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 da. Sometimes I just wish I could just die. I feel like no one cares about me. And after that whole thing, I go, and back to the happiness and everything. Then, in the video. I watched it, and I was like, I don't want to be that person who just wants people to be sad for them. So I always deleted it. Never uploaded it. Maybe once or twice I did. And then I was just like, sorry, I broke into a sadness. I didn't mean to. Because it, like, sounds scripted that I would say that. I don't do these with scripts. I think about these before, and then just think, what would I say? And sometimes I do wish I had gone through with it. Like one of the biggest times was last year when I could have gotten one of my friends to fucking kill themselves. Also, because they were they were in that stereotypical racist family who's just not racist homophobic family who's just like. If their kid is gay, lesbian, bi, transgender, whatever, they will disown them. I didn't know that. I, I was best friends with her sister, and I was just like, hey, because of me, there's no more straight people in the GSA. One of my best friends told me that, who was also her best friend. So, I took it as, okay, I guess I can say that, yeah. I said that, and it hurt her. It almost got her kicked out of her home by her parents and everything. And yet, I didn't even know it till I did an experiment with masturbation where she's like, oh, maybe my mind might be clearer if I don't masturbate for a long period of time. I did that. But maybe three weeks in, and then just like, yeah, I got that. And yet, had cleared my mind so much. When I, the leader, one of the leaders of the JSA, like, I'm a secretary. My friend who told me I was the last straight person in the JSA is the vice secretary. Oh, this my co-secretary, because I'm the big secretary. I put quotes around that because I'm not the best. I'm not good at writing. But I'm best at coming up with the things to put in notes. But, um, I feel like I should be crying right now. I'm so close to it. But, basically, they said, you almost hurt Vivian so bad. And I was like, wait, what, what, what did I do? They, ex they said, you told Vivian's sister that she was gay. And I was like, wait, when? And then I started thinking, oh, wait, fucking, oh. I will, uh, I feel like shit. And then my best friend, one of my best friends explained it to me, and they were just like, you realize her family is homophobic, and that it would hurt her so bad, and you, you're just an idiot 
And then I said, I wish I just had taken my life back then. And then he was just like, it's just the, it's just the lazy way out. And I was just like, it might be, but that's how I feel like I should have gone. And, and I, for that whole week, I felt like I should die. I didn't want to go to the GSA that week or the next week or ever go back. I did. I apologized to her. Me and her are kind of good now. And actually because of that I really learned don't say everything you hear. I already knew that, but I didn't really know it about friends. I know it more about family, like, oh, we, we're going to your Uncle Pat's. Don't tell your father. He hates Pat. And all that stuff. I understood that. But I didn't know it about friends. And I'm wearing something I used to wear. Because. And so basically, don't, we'll just, thanks to these videos and thinking I would rather die by my, by not my own hands, but by someone else's, by protecting someone, I learned, I figured that out and I'm just like, I do, I do not want to die, because I want to save as many people as I can. So, if any of you guys are going through that hard time, either just think, this is what I tell people, to think about all the bad time, all the bad things they've ever done that would hurt someone else, think about every bad thing in the world, how many were your fault, and think of all the good times and good things you did that wouldn't have happened if you weren't there. And then, I've told that to a lot of people, and most of them have said that I actually helped them. One of my best friends is actually suicidal a little bit right now. Feels like she should die and everything. Not the same friend, but one of my best friends. And actually, I can give her guidance because of my depression. I still have it. I as far as I know, there's, for me, there's never been a cure, I just, like, that's, uh, that's what that is. So, I've been like this for years, I don't know how I'd be without it, so I just deal, I just think about how many good people who love me who I know, and it sounds like I should be crying, but at this point I should be smiling. So, the people who are there saying, you, we need you, we don't need to lose you, you're worth a lot more to us than just a person, it makes you actually care. And I know every YouTuber says, like, oh, I love you, anyone, you know, anyone out there who has not hurt someone. And not... And things that they should not... I actually make me cry. Things that they need to die. Look at me. I have hurt so, so many of my friends. One of them physically, because... I just loved to, to fight at one point. One of them almost they almost got arrested at one point because I blank out sometimes when I do things. But I remembered it after they explained it to me and everything. And then about my friend, I almost got her parents to just own her and that wasn't even on purpose. All I can say is, if you feel like you're like that, either get help or try the methods I've told you, because they help. I love you guys, because you guys can be like me sometimes. I don't care what you do, all I care is you love yourself.
and I love you too, guys. Bye.